In this video, we are going to have a look at the Rich library and how we can create beautiful text in the terminal with it. This is a great library that is really fun to work with and it can even help you debugging your code. So now we will go over the main features. Rich is by the way an open source library available on GitHub and it's currently very popular with over 25k stars. You can simply install it by saying pip install rich and then to have a first look at the main features we can say python dash m rich. This will give us a great overview of the different features. For example, we can see the different colors, the different text styles, the different text properties, different language support, markup styles, tables, syntax highlighting, markdown support and much more. So now we will go over the main features. The first example is the simple rich print statement. So here we have a simple code that prints some information and let's first run it normally by saying Python and then the name of the file. So here we can see we have just the normal text. Now in order to improve this a little bit, we can simply say from rich import and then print. This will override the built-in print statement. So now if we use the rich print, let's see what happens. So here we can see we get colors for the numbers and also for the strings and this already looks much better. But instead of using the print statement, I recommend to use the console. This will give us even more features to style our text. So we say from rich.console import console and then create a console object. And then we can use console.print. So let's run this file. And here we see this is just a normal text. Now in order to style this, we can give it the argument style and then for example say the text should be bold. So here we can see the text font is bold, but we can add more style features to this bold string. For example, we can say bold underline and now we get an underlined string. We can also give it a color in the string, so we can say bold underline green. Now we get a green underlined text. We can even go further and say bold underline red on white. So now we should get red text on white background. And there we have it. Now in order to apply style just to a few parts of the sentence, we can apply the brackets and then start the style. And this will go until the closing bracket like this. So now in this example, all the text is bold and only this part gets the color cyan. So let's run this. And here we see this is some text where this part is blue and the rest is all bold. So yeah, this is how we can use the console and apply different stylings. Now, instead of using the console.print statement with the style command, we can also create a rich text object and style only this. So we can say from rich.text import text, then we create a text object and give it a string. And then we can apply text.stylize and define the styling. And we can also define the start and stop index. So now it will apply the styling only to the first six characters. So let's run this file and see what happens. So here we get the first console.print statements and here we get console print text, which is hello world. And only the first six characters are in bold magenta. So this is how we use the text object. We can also define a theme for our console object by saying from rich.theme import theme. Then we create a custom theme and this is a dictionary where we can give it a name as a key and then different styling as a string. For example, the success theme gets only the styling green and the error theme gets the styling bold and red. Then we create our console object by giving it this custom theme. And then when we say console.print, we can um, apply the different stylings from our theme. So here we use this key success and here the key error. And we can also just apply it to different parts of the text like so. So let's run this. And then we get this statement in the success theme. So it is green and this one in the error theme. So it is bold red. 
Then I also want to show you that we can very easily use emojis by using emoji markup language. So we can use this thumbs up markup for the thumbs up emoji. Or here we get an apple and a bug, but we can also paste them directly in here. So let's run this and see what happens. So yeah, here we see we get our thumbs up and here we have our apple and our bug. So yeah, I think this is pretty handy to define emojis quickly. Now, instead of using the console.print statement, we can also use the console.log statement. And then we get a few more information. So here we have a simple for loop. So 10 times we lock this information and then we sleep for a little bit. So let's run this. So now in the terminal, we see that in addition to just this text, we also get the timestamp on the left and on the right side, we get the file name and the line number for this console.log statement. So this can be really useful if you want to have more information about what's happening in your code. Now let's have a look at some more options, how we can log information and how we can deal with tracebacks. Here I have a little function that simply adds two numbers x and y and it also locks a information here and then down here I call this function and at the very end I call it with an integer and a string and now this will produce a error. So let's run this and see what happens. So yeah here we get the logging statements and then at the end we get the traceback with this type error. Now this is already helpful, but it can be formatted in a nicer way. So the first thing we can do is in the console.log statement, we can add an additional argument log locals and set this to true. This will also additionally lock all the available local variables. So in this case, X and Y. Or for example, if let's add another dummy variable here, this is also a local variable. Let's give it a string hello. So now let's run this and see what happens. So we still have our trace back here. And now if we scroll up, then we see we still get our logging statement. And now each time we additionally lock the local variables in a nice formatted way. So this already can give us helpful information to find out where the error is. But this trace back here still doesn't look that nice. So what we can do is we can say from rich dot and then trace back. We want to import install and then we can simply execute this. So this is a function that will install the rich trace back and overwrite the built in trace back. So now let's run this code. And with this little change here, we see we get a much nicer trace back at the end with some colors and also the exact line where the error is happening. So I think this is really helpful when you want to debug the code. But now instead of ha just having this trace back in our console, I will show you another great feature of Rich. Now, instead of just printing the exception in our terminal, we can also save it to an HTML file, which gives us a nice way to have a look at the whole code and the exception. So now what we do here is we create the console object with the record equals true argument. Then we do a little try except block so that our Python script won't crash. And in the accept statement, we say console.print exception. And then at the very end, we say console save HTML and then a file name. So let's run this. So now we see we still get the information in our console, but it also saved all the information in this demo.html file that we can open. And here we can open this HTML file in our browser and then have a nice way to have a look at this. And we can even say command F and then search for things. So let's search for the trace back and then we can have a look at this. So yeah, this is also pretty useful for debugging. Now let's have a look at how we can display tables with rich. So for this, we say from rich .table import table. Then we create a table object and we can give it a title. So in this example, we plot some Star Wars movies and information. Then we can add different columns by saying table.addColumn and we give it the name of the column. And then we can use again this style object and use different stylings. For example, here we use a different 
color for each column. And in this column, we also give it justify right. So you will see what this will do in a second. And then we can add different rows by saying table dot add row. And then in this example, we have to use three different arguments for the three different columns. And then at the end, again, we have our console object and say console dot print table. So let's run this. So this is how our table looks like. We have the title, we have the different columns, and then we have all the rows with the different styling. And note that the styling does not apply to the column name, but then only to the column values. And also note that for the last column, we set justify equals right. And this is why these numbers here are formatted to the right side of this column. So for example, we can also say justify equals left. And then let's have a look at this table again. And then we see these numbers here are formatted to the left side of this column. Rich can also render markdown. So we can say from rich.markdown import markdown. Then here we have a string in markdown format. So here, for example, this is an h1 tag with this hashtag. And here we have a list item and then we create our console object and then our markdown object with this markdown string. And then we can say console.print markdown. So let's run this. And then here we can see we have a beautiful rendering of the markdown. Here we have our h1 heading and here we have our list items. And this, by the way, also works with files. So here I have a readme.md file with this content in it. And then we can say python minus m rich dot markdown and then the file name readme.md. And then if we run this, then it renders this markdown file in our terminal. So yeah, this is how markdown works. And the last feature I want to show you is the progress bar. We can say from rich the progress import track and then we import time and then we do a little for loop. And instead of just saying for I in range, we additionally wrap this range in this track function and we can give it a description. Then we do a little print statement and then we sleep for half a second. So let's run this and see how this looks like. So we see we get the progress bar, which is being updated with each step. And at the end, we can still see the whole progress bar with 100%. So yeah, I think this is a really nice and also very simple way to display a beautiful progress bar in your terminal. And yeah, that's the main features I wanted to show you. There are more available. And for this, you can check out the official documentation. I can put the link in the description below. And that's it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. And if so, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.